Water is an abiotic factor, or a non-living factor, and the most abundant substance in living organisms. It is essential to life on Earth, and ties together major parts of climate systems, like the ocean, clouds, vegetation, and more, all part of this marvelous thing called the water cycle. In order to learn about the water cycle, we first need to learn what a biogeochemical cycle is. It's a circulation of matter through the living and non-living components of an ecosystem, the biotic and the abiotic. These substances are recycled or accumulated. Every drop of water that is on the planet is all the water that has ever been on the planet. This means that the water is cycled, a continuous movement of water throughout the planet and its atmosphere. Now, the simpler version of the water cycle is evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. Evaporation is a process in which water changes into vapor and enters the atmosphere. The clouds in the atmosphere contain the water vapor. When it cools, it condenses and gravity pulls the water to the earth as precipitation, which can be rain, sleet, hail, or snow. Precipitation occurs over land and ocean. The simpler version has its merits, but the reality of the cycle is way more complex. These are not the only processes in the water cycle. Be prepared for a lot of vocab. Feel free to pause the video and write it down. Precipitation brings water down to the surface, and water can then move slowly through the pores in soil or permeable rock called percolation. Most groundwater, water below the surface, comes from precipitation, and groundwater discharge is a movement of groundwater from the subsurface to the surface. The water cycle involves vegetation too, precipitation that does not reach the soil, but is instead intercepted by plant leaves, branches of plants, and the forest floor is called interception. The water a plant takes from the soil is from plant uptake, water taken from the groundwater flow and soil moisture. Only about 1% of this water is actually used by the plant, and the rest is passed back into the atmosphere in the form of water vapor. Through a process called transpiration, the terms transpiration and evapotranspiration are often used together, but evapotranspiration is a more inclusive term as it includes evaporation of lakes, streams, oceans, and plants. Next up, infiltration, the downward movement of water through the surface of the soil. Surface runoff is the flow of water occurring on the ground surface when excess rainwater, snowmelt, or other sources can no longer sufficiently rapidly infiltrate in the soil. Similarly, subsurface runoff is the water that infiltrates in the unsaturated zone from rain, snowmelt, or other sources and moves laterally towards streams. The oceans hold about 97% of Earth's water making it the largest store of water. Other examples of water stores are the atmosphere, lakes, rivers and streams, glaciers and ice, and aquifers, a body of rock or sediment that holds groundwater. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe.